2020 Tour de Provence Stage 3, Nairo Man was absolutely flying. And I want to do a bit of analysis of this stage itself, but also talk about Nairo Man's season in 2020 and why I think he's going to do really well in 2022. So 2020 Tour de Provence, he absolutely battered everyone on this stage. It was a really good performance. He then went to Oatvar, did the fastest time ever up the cold airs. Rumours of seven watts per kilo for 10 minutes, maybe more, which is absolutely crazy. On a climb that doesn't suit him as it's really flat. And then he had a decent, you know, season. And then obviously, Tour de France had a drugs raid, all the rest of it. And anyway, he didn't perform that well on the tour. Then he went for double knee surgery between 2020 and 2021. Uh, 2021, he had a pretty poor season and um, wasn't great. So I think overall, I'm quite excited to see Nino Man with no double knee surgery in between 21 and 22. And because Arkea Samsic have actually got an invite to the Giro, I think he's going to go really well there because there's no time trial. So anyway, we go into this. This is Wiener Anacona's power day to the lad on the front. For reference, he weighs about 65 kilos. So he's doing about six and a half watts per kilo uh, for six minutes on this climb uh, on Mont Blanc 2 to basically just string it out. And you can see here, he's at 480 watts. They're going 19k an hour up a 9% climb. Everyone's strung out. Everyone's looking battered. Like Look at the faces. Everyone's like struggling, really, really struggling. Dunbar had to close a gap. Sepp Kuss is looking a bit rough. Nairo Man looks like he's going just for a Sunday club ride. Um, he looks very, very relaxed. But anyway, it's a really exciting performance from Nairo Man because it was the first time we saw him in our KSM Sitch colours and he actually had a really good outing. And I think it was disappointing that 2020, for him especially, was like obviously split in half and it all happened at the end of the year. But I am excited to see him in some Italian races again uh, because our care Samsic now have invited to all World Tour teams. And you can see Sepkus, uh third wheel now. So we're going to hop over to his power data in just a minute. Wiener Anacona is coming towards the end of his power, end of his turn. You can see Hugh Carthy there, so really struggling out the saddle. It just goes to show how hard it's been. I mean, it was a decent tempo before Wiener Anacona got on the front, but it was really tough. So now we're going on to Sepkus's power data and you can see this is the attack when Nairo Man goes. Sepkus was up to 800 watts. Now he's doing 600 trying to follow him. And you can see Nino Man is just flying away. Sepkus is probably 63 kilos. Nino Man maybe 55 or something. I'm not 100% sure. But anyway, you can see here, Nino Man just keeps going because Sepkus is still doing like 400 watts. And Nino Man's just flying away from him. Like, this is the thing that's hard to tell on the TV. It looks like Sepkus is doing like 200 watts. And it's like, he does go down to like 200 for a little bit. But generally, like, he's doing 380, 360. And Nino Man's just like off the picture. Got a 10 second gap straight away. It's just crazy how fast that acceleration was from Nino Man. And now you just think like Sepkus is still riding like close to 400 watts and getting nowhere near him. And this is where it's such an amazing performance because it was such a hard climb beforehand. Nairo then accelerated and then kept going. It wasn't like one of those climbs where it's really high climb performance, but it's like really steady. Nairo was like, it was like not crazy fast at the bottom. Then it went really quick when Wiener and Akuna got on the front. Bargi helped out as well. And then after that, you then attacked and then just sat back into a rhythm of like six and a half watts per kilo or something. So that's what people estimate half an hour at 6.5 to 6.6. Some people see 6.7. I think that's probably a little bit too high. Um, but you can see here again, Sepkus is still doing good power behind. Um, and Nairo Man is just like out of picture now. And you can see just visually how quick he's going up the climb. Uh, it's really impressive. And he looks he like he looked a lot slimmer then than he did before. His cadence has come up a little bit as well. So it was just exciting. But you can see all the rest of these guys at like Pino, Vlasov, Sivakov. And Bagioli. I mean, all these guys are properly, probably good. And Nairo is just, you know, laughing at them basically. And attacking. He's already got ten seconds. I mean, it's just crazy, isn't it? Like ten seconds in like, you know, six, seven hundred meters. Um, it's it's very impressive. So anyway, we're going to skip ahead now. Nairo man gets the W here. Um, well ahead. Sepkus is playing games behind. You can see the powers going up and down. And Nairo man was just riding consistently, and he took an absolutely huge victory. Like two and a half minutes, I think it was on Sepkus. Um, on Hugh Carthy and uh, Lutschenko is about a minute and a half. But still, you can see here, like, he's not... I mean, he's trying quite hard, but he's definitely not going full towards the end because he just knows he has enough time to properly celebrate. I don't think he even cared about the GC, but he was going to win it anyway. But, yeah, it's just an unbelievable performance from Nine Man. I'm hoping we can see the same in the Giro d'Italia this year, hopefully with no minimum amounts of TT kilometres and a lot of hard stages. It'll be a Nairo Man versus Carapaz thing. But here comes Sepkus coming in. You can see it's properly surgy at the end. We're now like a minute 50 back and Sepkus is still doing some good numbers and you know it's just crazy how good um Nairo man was on this day and i think this is the thing with him if he can just keep that consistency because he always has these unbelievable performances but he often seems to struggle with consistency but anyway cheers for watching hope you enjoy this video about Nairo man leave your thoughts below will Nairo man get a podium on the Giro? i think he probably will um assuming he goes there um which he should do 
And then, um, you know, what else is Narrowman going to achieve next year? Will he ever win another Grand Tour? That is the question.